Good morning and welcome to our morning prayers here at St Peter's Dipsley. I'm glad you're able to join me this morning. Let us pray. Dear Lord, as we rise to meet you each new day, please let us be filled with your spirit. Wherever we go, let us spread love, joy, peace, goodness and faithfulness. Let us desire to become more like you and to worship you in all we do. Help us desire these things so much more than the sin that entices us. Thank you for always going before us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Psalm 104 verses 24 to 35. How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is a sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things both large and small. There the ships go to and fro, and Leviathan, which you formed, to frolic there. All creatures look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the law. But may sinners vanish from the earth and the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The author of this psalm is anonymous and the theme of this psalm appreciates God through his creation. He not only creates but maintains his creation. The Lord's care is the source of our joy. The psalms are essentially poetry written to express the deep truths about God and his world. Try reading the book of Psalms and Proverbs too, and you will understand why they have become two of the most popular books in the Bible. This psalm tells us that God has sovereignty over all creation. God made it all, everything. God is a source of life for us and all living things. We are so dependent on God that we don't even realise it until something interrupts the natural flow of things we take for granted. We then become unsettled and in need of our source. We have to remember he wants a constant relationship with us, not just when we need him for something. I hope I will. And I hope you will always remember this from verses 33 to 34. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. Praise him all day long, every day. Let us pray. 
God, our Maker and Redeemer. We give you thanks for the wonder of creation, for the gift of life, and that together we may become your children. We praise you for Christ, your living word, through whom we are taught the perfect way and the privilege of service, and for your spirit, who offers rich gifts to us for the common good. We praise you, our God, Father, Son, and Spirit, forever. Amen. Our next reading is taken from Acts chapter 1, verse 11, verses 1 to 11. In my former book, Theopolis, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered round him and asked him, Lord, are you going at this time to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid them, hid him from their sight. While they were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them, Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The book of Acts was written by Luke as a sequel to his gospel. It is an accurate historical record of the early church. It is also a theological book with lessons and living examples of the work of the Holy Spirit, church relationships and organization, the implications of grace and the law of love. It also builds a strong case for the validity of Christ's claims and promises. Because of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the disciples, Christianity spread during the first century from believing Jews to non-Jews in 39 cities and 39 countries, islands or provinces. Jesus went to great lengths to prove that he had risen from the dead. John's Gospel records only a few of the many events of Jesus' life on earth, but the Gospel includes everything we need to know to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, through whom we receive eternal life. As he writes in chapter 21, verse 25, if every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. 
Jesus left a trail of evidence so that everyone, including you and me, would be able to understand what he had done on the cross and in the tomb. The verses we have read are the bridge between the events recorded in the Gospels and the events marking the beginning of the church. Jesus spent 40 days teaching his disciples and as he taught them, they began to argue less among themselves and were convinced of his resurrection and learned about the kingdom of God and discovered their power source, the Holy Spirit. However, for a time, they did still seem to think that it was going to be a political kingdom. But the kingdom Jesus spoke about was, first of all, a spiritual kingdom established in the hearts of believers. Sometimes it is hard to let go of our own ideas and let God begin to work. It can be confusing and even painful, but until we give up our own plans, we can't experience God's. Jesus knew he didn't have much time left, so he didn't waste it correcting his disciples. He took time to communicate two important realities about his kingdom. The first is power. The disciples would be unable to fulfill the mission Jesus was about to give them, which was the Great Commission, as we read in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. They needed his presence and power. The power believers be receive from the Holy Spirit includes courage, boldness, confidence, insight, ability, and authority. The disciples would need all these gifts to fulfill their mission, to enable us as believers in Jesus Christ. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives to help us do the important work God has for us. However, we have to be aware that we can't do things by our own strength. And sometimes we run ahead of God because of our eagerness to get on with the job. We should not worry about having to wait. It's all part of God's plan. We have to listen for God's complete instructions before we go ahead with our plans. We need God's timing and power to be truly effective. The second reality is witnessing. This reason for the power was given to communicate a message. Verse eight, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And in verse four, he had already told them to wait for the gift his father would send. Sometimes waiting for the Holy Spirit to create an opportunity for ministry is difficult, but real results come when we prayerfully wait to get a sense of what the Holy Spirit wants us to do. We have to make sure that we are also contributing in some way to the ever widening circle of God's loving message. We can only imagine what Jesus' ascension to heaven looked like. I've no doubt it left an unforgettable impression on the disciples and would have confirmed everything Jesus had taught them. And the wonderful thing is, someday we won't have to use our imagination because as we read in verse 11, we'll be able to see Jesus for ourselves. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal light, shine into our hearts. Eternal goodness, deliver us from evil. Eternal power, be our support. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal pity, have mercy on us. With all that our heart and mind and soul and strength we may seek your face and be brought to your infinite mercy, to your holy presence, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we pray for the church and the world, let us first thank God for the power of his love, which continually surrounds us wherever we are. God our Father, Lord of heaven and earth, who made the world and everything in it, we give you thanks for the wonderful gift of life and all the pleasures that it brings us. We praise you for the joys of creation, so evident in our ever-changing seasons. We acknowledge that we are the children of your family, and so we offer our grateful thanks for all the love which you bestow upon us. For good health and daily food, for the shelter and care of our homes, for the love of family and friends which surround us. We rejoice in the knowledge that Jesus is alive and lives in each one of us. May we show our allegiance our commitment and our love to him and in doing so receive his spirit in our lives. We pray that the spirit will work through us, helping us all to know you, to love you and to do your will. We thank you for the power of your love which manifests itself in so many ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church, Lord, for John and Martin, our bishops, and ask that you will continue to guide them along the path you have chosen for them. We pray for Garth and Ian here in the Ipsley Parish. We ask that you would continue to pour out your blessings upon them as they continue to lead your people during the continued COVID-19 lockdown. We give thanks for the continuing pastoral care, for prayers being offered for those in need, for the support given to anyone who needs it, for the love shown to one another during this time of crisis. Help us to continue to love and reach out to our neighbours who may be in distress. We ask that you would help us all to continue to obediently walk in the light of your truth each and every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light which no darkness can quench. We pray for those who mourn because of the death of a loved one, and for those who still miss the company and care of those dear to them. We pray for the families of Janet Tegg, David Hargreaves, Bill Parrish, and we pray for Irene Uiara and her family as they mourn the loss of her brother. We ask that you will hold them close as they come to terms with their loss. Please comfort them, we pray, during the dark hours of the night. And we ask that they will be led once more into the light of your love. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. 
Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. In this time of anxiety, give us strength to comfort the fearful, to tend to the sick, and to assure the isolated of our love and your love. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill. We remember especially all those who are mentioned in the weekly catch. And we bring to mind especially Chris Tilly and ask that you will reduce the pain that she has and the suffering that she is undergoing. Please be close to all those who are afraid or in isolation. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God enfold you in his love and guide you in his ways, today and every day. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us in our morning prayers here at St Peter's Church, Ipsley. I hope you'll be able to join us again tomorrow. <laughs>